what men feed him. That everything, the heavens, the, the, the seven heavens, the earth, all of the creatures, all of the plants, all of the mountains, all of the rocks, they extol God's glory, but But we often just don't understand the word of tasbih, and so that's the subtle difference between men and man in Arabic bread. Okay, let's move on to a different topic. Um, so, إِنَّ فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّرَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَقَّرَ we have given you a manifest victory. This, you notice this, fa'al mudara is now mansub. It is not ya'firu lakallahu. It's liya'fira lakallahu. It's mansub because of this lam at the beginning known as lam uh, al-ta'lil. And um, this lam al-ta'lil is, it, it shows purpose. We have given you a manifest victory so that God might show you for the purpose that God, I'm sorry, would forgive you uh, your your sins and your faults, past as well as future, and complete his blessing upon you. Everything here is mansoob because of lam al -ta'lil. I think most of you who have studied Arabic are familiar with lam al -ta'lil, and lam al -ta'lil, and it shows the intent and purpose of something that has happened before. The boy came to play. Because that's why he came. He came to play. Okay? Uh, now, this is talking about Musa alayhi salam. You notice here it's li yakuna. It's not yakunu as it normally would be because of this lamb with the kasra. This lamb here, however, is not lamb al They didn't pull Musa out of the river so that he would turn to be an enemy for them. They pulled him out because they saw him in the river and the wife of Sarah said, maybe we can take him as a son, maybe if we sleep him. That was their intent and their purpose. This lamb here in Arabic is known as lamb al-aqibah. Lamb al-aqibah means the lamb of future consequence. And this lamb also, khansab al-fa'l al mudara but it is, it is a different meaning. They didn't do this with this intent, but the inevitable consequence was that he would turn to be their enemy. Now, Let's spend a few minutes on this verse, and then I think after that I'll cover one more topic. I, I uh, unfortunately have to be out a touch before when, uh, before the event, and I think uh, I, I can see in your faces that you've probably had uh, enough would be, uh, I think you've had more than enough. So I'll, I'll cover this and one more topic, inshallah, uh, because there's one thing I just don't want to leave out of this lecture. Uh, so let's look at this verse. So from Al Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish them while you are with them, and Allah will not punish them while they are uh, uh, asking for forgiveness. And you notice that the English here uh, makes it very, very um, symmetric. God will not choose to chastise them, should be while, not with, while you, Prophet, are among them, nor would God chastise them when they might yet ask for forgiveness. Here, you notice this verb here is mansub. مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُ This is not a lamb of intent. This is not lamb al -ta'lib. This is not lamb al -aqiba. This is a construction in Arabic known as lamb al-juhud. And lamb al-juhud also khamsab um, al mubarak and lamb al-juhud is the reason that it's يُعَذِّبَهُمْ not يُعَذِّبُهُمْ uh, and it, it comes in the setting of a negation and so what لام الجحود implies is a definite no it is to make that no sir for sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish them while you are with them now notice this is in the form of a verb فَعَلَ مُبَارَ verbs are more transitory than nouns in, in, according to Arabic grammarian they are a less strong construction than nouns, a less lasting construction than nouns. So for example, if I take the verb form and juxtapose it to ism al fa'il, the person who is doing the noun, just to give you an example, if I say fashala, he failed. If I say fashion, he's a failure. So you can see that one of them carries a quality of more intrinsic nature and more lasting effect. So, ma kana Allahu 
the Prophet, peace be upon him, is not going to be with them forever. He will not be with them. Either he may emigrate to Al-Madinah, or of course he will die. So God will not punish them using a form that implies temporary situation. Because anta fihim, while you are with him, is temporary, this form is a verb form, temporary. But the more permanent rule, ma kana Allahu mu'addibahum. But Allah will not be a punisher of them. This is ism al-fa'al. Ism al-fa'al in Arabic is usually taken from al-fa'al al-fulani. Kataba, kadib. Fa'ala, fa'al. Daraba, darib. Akala, akal. But if the verb has more than three letters in the noun, then it would go like akhraja, uh, mukhrij. Addaba, uh, mu'addib. So this is ism al-fa'al. So the more permanent rule, Now notice that this is a fi'al mudara. This is not Again, you don't have to be a mustaghfir. You just have to ask for forgiveness. You don't have to be one of the people who continuously asks for forgiveness or that your quality is to ask for forgiveness. It is enough to occasionally ask for forgiveness and that on a permanent basis will avert the punishment. Again, a statement of tremendous mercy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nuances of the construction, and God knows best. Okay, in my opinion, and God knows best. Okay, and now the, the construction I want to end with here. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً That's the only snippet I want to focus on. When your Lord said to the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفًا جَاعِلٌ is اسم الفاعل جَعَلَ جَاعِلٌ فَعَلَ فَاعِلٌ You notice that خَلِيفَةً here is منصوب Why is خَلِيفَةً منصوب? Because اسم الفاعل can act in the sentence It can act in place of the verb And so it can have a فاعل and a مفعول به and so it can have a subject and an object, and this is the object of ism al-fa'il when it functions in the sentence taking the place of the verb. So, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. We would call khalifa here the ma'mul of ism al-fa'il, not the ma'mul that has that nice, you know, ajwa dates in it, but 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 even more tasty than that. Okay, this construction is a very very tasty, delicious construction in Arabic. And this is Amal Ism al Okay? Wa if qala rabbuka al malaikati inni khaliqun, again Ism al fa'il, khalaq al khaliq, basharan min tini. Again, maf'ul bihi for Ism al fa'il. Fala'allaka bakhi'un nafsaka. Perhaps you are going to torture yourself to death, and it is nafsaka here, mansub. This is mansub because it is. For it, it is the maf'ul bihi, I'm sorry, for ism al fa'il. So now you've seen this construction in action. Okay, now let's go here. So, talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ذَلِكَ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ He is the one who knows what is hidden and what is expressed, and what may be hidden by people or hidden from people, what is hidden and what is expressed on all realms. You notice here, alim is ism al fa'il. But al ghaybi here is majroor, not mansoor. Even though the action is taking place upon it, alim al ghaybi wa shahad. Here, ghafiri al dhambi, ghafir is al fa'al, but it's ghafiri al dhambi wa qabili al tawbi, not ghafiri al dhamba wa qabili al tawba. Okay? So, huwa khaliqu kulli shayin, not kulla shayin, khaliq is al fa'al. So this is majroor, 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 not mansub, not mansub, not mansub. It seems to defy the rule that we have just been talking about, that ism al fa'il will take an object in the sentence because it will function as a verb. So why in the world would that not be the case? Well, because again, the reason that little boy cries in that cartoon, because ism al fa'il functions only under certain conditions. It does not always function in the sentence to, to have a mouth. And the main condition in which it will function for the purists here, if it is muqtaran bi'al or muhalla bi'al, it always functions. But when it is not, as in all of these examples, 
then the first condition for it to function is that it has to يدل على الحال والاستقبال and what that means is it has to imply something that is happening now or will happen in the future it cannot reflect on something that happened in the past or happens continuously from past, present, and future if that is the situation then اسم الفاعل does not function in the sentence and does not take a مفعول به and it takes instead of مضاف إليه so here the grammar is telling us the meaning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إني جعل في الأرض خليفة now I am creating a vice chair. This is something happening now or going to happen in the future. In the Khalif al I am creating a human being. Human beings have not always existed on the planet. We know that. But when the construction here comes and says, Alimi al Ghaibi wa Shahadati, then the Qasra here tells me that this Alim is not functioning in the sense. This Ism al Fa'il la ya'mal fi hadi al Jumla. Why doesn't it? Because that condition of al Hal wal Istiqbal is not present. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just now going to become a knower of what is hidden and, and what is expressed. He has always known that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been alim al ghaibi wa He is not now going to start, astaghfirullah, being ghafir al-dhambi wa qabi al He has always been and always will be ghafir al the, the the forgiver of sins and the acceptor of repentance. And the same thing, of course, huwa khaliqu kulli shayin. He has always been the creator of everything. And so the grammar here leads us to that meaning. And it is a statement of God's glory. And you see it in other places in the Quran. For example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, He will be the one who will complete his light. This isn't something that's just going to happen now because, say, Islam has, you know, the Quran. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, always, for all of the variety of creations and, and this universe and perhaps other he has always been the one who will complete his life and so we see here that ism al fa'il uh, is not uh, functioning uh, in in the sentence and um, let me i want to go until about uh, a quarter till and leave 10 minutes for questions so uh, we notice here in, in the variety of prayers zakaria is praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are the one who hears the dua. Samia here is Sirat Mubarak. Remember, we talked about Sirat Mubarak, Samia al dua. Samia al dua can also act in the sentence like Ism al Fa'il and have a mafool bihi. The fact that this is majroor instead of Samia al dua, Samia al dua, says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been the one who hears prayers. And um, uncommon constructions of <coughs> Sirat al Mubalagha, notice here, Wama uh, arsanaka illa mubashiran wa nadira. Ya ayyuhan nabi wa ima arsanaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. Mubashir is ism al fa'il, nadira is sirat mubalagha. Arsanaka shahidan, we have revealed you, brought you forth as a witness and a giver of glad tidings, ism al fa'il, ism al fa'il, wa nadir. Nadir is one of the uncommon sirat al mubalagha in Arabic from a four letter verb. Most Siyad al come from verbs that have three letters. But Bashara wa Anbara are among the few verbs that have this. And you notice here, Ism al Fa'il, Ism al Fa'il, wa Siyad al That means you are a shahid, you are a Mubashir, but you are the one who delivers a great deal of warning because human beings need warning more than they need anything else. So it is a statement uh, about uh, human nature. And فَأَذَاقَهُمُ اللَّهُ الْخِزْيُ في الحياة الدنيا الله من الله الخزي في الحياة الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة أكبر أكبر here now is اسم التفضيل and let's end with اسم التفضيل اسم التفضيل means even more than and so usually when I use the construction of اسم التفضيل one thing is being compared to another on a parameter so in سورة الكهف when uh, one man is arguing with the other about how much more wealthy he says أنا أكثر منك مالا وعز نفرا I am more than you in money so, we're comparing two things. Ana wa anta, ana wa minka. I am more than you, man, in money. So, when we say Allahu Akbar, there's no comparison. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Akbar. To, he is bigger than everything on all parameters. Okay? So, that is what will be in action when the uslub is incomplete. Because if I'm comparing one human being, well, I am taller than so and so. Well, so-and-so is smarter than me, uh, etc. 
two, two things are being compared along the parameter. When we say Allahu Akbar, Allah is bigger than everyone in everything. Okay? And so same thing here, Iqra wa Rabbuk al -akram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most bountiful, no one to compare him to, and no parameter to compare against, the most bountiful, and it's here even wal -akram. And so um, in, I'm going to just skip ahead uh, for a minute. In the prayers, we often see you are the one who hears much and you know much. Okay? We use that in, in dua all the time. Uh, in my interpretation, in my opinion, and I really need to, I can't stress this enough. I have noticed that when this, this is for ordinary dua, I use you know, Ghafoor, Rahim, Sameer, Ali. But when my back is to the wall, when I am praying ardently, when I am desperate, I have noticed that the prayers then get into Sighat al uh, I'm sorry, Usloob al forgive me. So that uh, here, Musa alayhi salam is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to be angry with them for the, the rebellion of the Israelites. And وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِيمُ now you are the most forgiving of the forgivers because I am now in a state of desperation so I am resorting to uslub or ism and again and you when he is so sick that he is just at his wit's end so he says the, 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 the harm has befallen me affliction has befallen me to such a severe degree and I am now in a state of desperation, and so I am praying to you using ism al tafdil or uslub al tafdil anta arham al rahimin. And we notice here again Nuh when he is praying for his son, and his son won't come on the boat, and he, you know, my son is going to be among the kafirs, and so he is praying to Allah subhanahu wa taala in a state of desperation about the fate of his son, and so he doesn't say anta al hakim. He says wa anta ahkam al hakim. You are the most just of all of the judges. And so in my own prayer, in my own worship, when I'm just praying regularly, I tend to use Sirat al But when I feel desperate, when I am ardently asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I resort to Ism al and Arham al Rahim, or Anta Ahkam al Hakimi, or however it is. And God knows best, of course, all prayers are good. And finally, to end on, was Zakariya ibn Adar of the whole. So Zachariah, when he was desperate because he, he would not, was not having a child, his wife was not getting pregnant, says, God, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me without an heir. But even if I am left without an heir, you are the best of inheritors. And I just want to point out a little known fact that khair is ism tafdil. Like akbar, like azgar, like afdal, like a'la. Like Arham, it's actually in Arabic Akhyar, but it is abbreviated to Khair. And so when I say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Anta Khairul Wahideen, or Anta Khairul Wahideen, or Anta Khairul Wahideen, it is actually Ism Tafdeen, Anta Akhyaru, this, that, or, or the other of, of the many uh, divine prophets. Okay, and so. Um, there, there really is so much more to cover. If, if there is interest, uh, then you know certainly I, I am more than happy to uh, to come uh, give uh, another uh, another session. Uh, but what I want to stress at the end is that knowing the grammar is one very very small part. I've tried to focus on it, but I don't I don't want to to overblow it. There, is, there are so many facets to, uh, to the Qur'an. Um, and so w one facet, of course, is just knowing the, the, the language. And so uh, let us then finish with this example, uh, a verse that, that uh, you know, I've always wondered about from Surah Al-A'raq, that those who are, you know, disbelieve in our signs and are arrogant, the doors of heaven will not be open to them and they will not enter heaven until 
uh, the camel passes through the eye of the needle. And that's how most translators translate it. Okay? And I've always wondered, what in the world does a camel have to do with the eye of a needle? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it, so I accept it. And then I learned that the word jamal and its variant form juman actually also means a big thick rope, especially the rope that you use on ships to hold the anchor. And so that's how Muhammad Asa translates it. And he says, what in the world does a camel have to do with the eye of a needle? A rope? Of course, you pass a thin thread through the eye of a needle, but you try to put a rope through the eye, but you can't do it. So he adopts the translation of jamal as a thick rope, not as a, 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 a camel. So I was very happy with that. And then I ran into, you know, in my, in my, uh, in my Bible study, uh, that was another joke, but I actually do try to keep up with the Bible as much as I can, because I think it is important. And when we say, you know, that we believe in God's books, that needs to have implications. So in Matthew chapter 19, I tell you the truth, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So when I ran across this in the Gospel of Matthew, then I said, oh my goodness, maybe it really does mean camel, and it's just, okay, fine. Yes, of course, you can't pass a camel through a needle. So it really is impossible because the Bible said so. But my heart was not comfortable. I was not in a state of psychological ease. And then, alhamdulillah, I finally found Cyril of Alexandria, a very early and, and acclaimed, by the way, scholar, uh, uh, said that camel is a Greek misspelling, that camelos was written in place of camelos, camel, which means camel, camelos, which means camel, was written in place of camelos, which actually in Greek means rope or cable. And so again, my, my psychological peace was restored, and now I believe happily and comfortably that it does mean a rope through the eye of a needle. So it's not just about grammar. There are so many things, history, science, um, that, that play into it. Uh, you know, when, when, when uh, we know that the story of Yusuf alayhi salam takes place in ancient Egypt. We know the story of Musa alayhi salam takes place in ancient Egypt. But in Surah Yusuf, the, the, the pharaoh is always referred to as al-Malik. Yet with Musa, it's always referred to as Pharaoh. But we know that Egypt was ruled by pharaohs throughout the entire, you know, six, seven thousand year span. So why in Surah Yusuf is it Al-Malik? Why in the rest of the Quran it is Fir'aun, Pharaoh? Well, this only became apparent after the Rosetta Stone in 1898, when hieroglyphics were deciphered, and we learned that Egyptians did not refer to a foreign usurper of the throne as Pharaoh. To be Pharaoh, you had to be of the pure-blooded lineage of Egyptians, and it is believed, and God knows best, that the Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt during the time of Yusuf was among the Hyksus dynasty, who were foreign invaders, Arabian invaders, who took over the throne for a while, so the Egyptians would never have referred to him as Pharaoh. And yet during Musa, whether it was Ramses II or Ramses III, he was Pharaoh. And so the Quran, when it says Malik and then says Pharaoh, that is truly a statement of amazing historical accuracy. And so there are so many ways, so many branches of knowledge to appreciating the Quran. Grammar is just a small part, but I hope that I have brought some of the magic of that small part to you today. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from me and to forgive me uh, whatever mistakes I may have made. They, they are certainly not intentional, and Allah knows best. And uh, five minutes for questions. And if there are no questions, that's even better. And that's the last one. Thank you. serious thought, but what comes to my mind immediately is that it is a tamiz, 
and I have often had that question, but I was just yeah, leaving I through. Yeah, I have always, whenever I read Yeah, I have run across that question in my own mind several times, and I've always meant to research it, and I haven't. To fill in the space temporarily until I go back, I have always imputed that either Kaburat Halu Kalimatan or more, that was never convincing to me. Yeah, that was never convincing to me. What was most convincing to me was that it is a tamiz of, you know, Kaburat here and then here Kalimatan tamiz for here. Like, so. So it would be in Mansoor because it's Tamiz and it would be a, a, you know, a, a clarification of that and that's how I have always answered it in my own mind but I don't know what the, you know, what, what people who are, you know, the real grammarians, the real scholars would say on it and I've actually meant to look it up and I haven't uh, yet. So thank you. Another, uh, next slide, uh, I think, uh, Mr. sometimes like the word, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 yeah I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it is sometimes a stata and sometimes a star. Uh, it, it is a form of ijaz, a form of shortening. And in some cases, I can sort of see in my own mind the reason for shortening. Uh, it, like, for example, when uh, when the angel comes to Maryam alayhi salam and she is. Uh, very afraid, of course, who is this man who has entered upon her and she seeks refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa is this man going to harm her? And then he tells her, you're going to have a, a baby and I'm, that I'm not, how in the world could this happen? And so she's in a state of extreme agitation. She says, well, I'm a And it's really, well, I'm yeah. yeah. But it's aqun, right? it's not with ijaz. Yeah. And here, that has seemed to me to imply that, that state of sort of fright and agitation, whereas, for example, Zakaria said, "Lam akun bidu'aika rabbi shaqiyya," right in the same in the same surah. And so here I can understand the ijaz. There I can't. Un I, I don't know the reason. And of course, there's much, much, much I don't yeah. know. Uh, but there are a couple of uh, I am blanking on uh, the, the man's name, but there's a man who was written in Arabic and has podcasts in Arabic. Uh, a wonderful scholar, and uh, the, the title of the podcast, if you want to look it up, is Lamsat Bayaniya fi Quran. And he answers a lot of similar questions. I hope he answers this sort of question. And I'm so sorry that I am just, his name is escaping me at, at this point. Yes. I have a simple question, and, and uh, I was uh, reflecting on this Yes, yes, and you actually, I think when you had stepped out, yeah. we talked about Hamad al Hatab as a, a part of the Slug al Ikhtisas because it is singling her out for this, this horrible uh, job that she does of carrying this firewood of animosity, of kindling the fires of hatred among people. And so Hamad al Hatab, and that question actually came to my mind when my son Dean asked me, because we were reading together, and he says, Hamad al where my mom was at Hamad al Hatab. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I, I had to go look it up and so on and realize that this is the same sort of uh, construction. Uh, and then we were at a mosque in Cordoba and we picked up a Quran there and it was Hamad al uh -huh. So Hamad al is is a variant, uh, a variant reading as well. And uh, by the way, uh, so that I don't forget, uh, Jihad Turk, uh, I, you know, the Prophet said, don't don't praise people. Uh, I'll just end by, by uh, praising him. <laughs> by praising him, uh, he is one of the very, very rare success stories that not only has he, alhamdulillah, mastered Arabic and is teacher of Arabic, being born here and raised in an English-speaking household, but he had the fortitude to speak to his kids in classical Arabic only, and I remember with great fondness and pride speaking with his son in classical Arabic when his son was a young boy and his son was fluent without an error in classical Arabic. No mistakes whatsoever and no time to fail. Uh, so it is truly a challenge and in that vein, I know a very nice young man sitting in the back there. Can you stand up, sir? Okay. And uh, while I can't use the podium for any official endorsements, 
Uh, this young man is a teacher of Arabic. And uh, so for those of you who may feel, well, I'd like to learn some Arabic, we have many other Arabic teachers here that can get up and also introduce themselves. Um, you, can, you can meet up with him and, and uh, you know, talk to him about maybe arranging lessons, uh, etc. I hope that that adhan was on someone's phone and not in the Islamic Center, because I really I must leave before the adhan holds me here. So please forgive me. Yes, and one last yeah. question. That I uh, it's related to the word hamalat al hamal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's hal. Okay. What do you think about hal? Uh huh. So if to, it's to make the Arab as hal. If it's hal, if it's hal for a fa'al mahdub. Of course, uh -huh. yes. Wahia kanat, for example. But, but uh, you yeah. know, and so that would that would certainly go. And I, yeah. Yes, yes. And you can you will often find multiple interpretations yes. for the same uh, thing. And uh, yes, uh, again, in the interest of intellectual honesty, I often just picked uh, you know the interpretation that is most interesting to me. Like for example, was sama talking about the day of judgment. So you notice here that as-sama' is a feminine word, but mulfatarun is a masculine adjective. Why the disparity? Some, I have an answer for that. Yeah, some people will say that it is because as-sama' is both feminine and masculine in the Arabic, so it's allowed. My, no, it is not a, a true uh, feminine word. E exactly. Gender-wise, it's not like... And that is the conventional interpretation as as-sama', yes. but I don't like that interpretation myself because always it's plural is as-sama'at in a feminine. The interpretation I like is the, the mixture of the genders is to imply a temporary state because we know that the Quran says you look at the sky, there are no defects in the sky. But on this day, as an exception, and so it's like when a woman, we talk about a woman who's pregnant, we don't say we say when we talk about a woman who is breastfeeding, we say we don't say if her profession, like Halima Saadiyya, is she's a nursemaid, then we say she is a murda'a. So, but when we say imra'atun jadina, she's beautiful, sifa mushabbah. She's beautiful today, she's beautiful tomorrow, she's always beautiful, God bless her. Okay, so uh, then when we say asama'un fatrun, that disparity of the masculine and feminine, like imra'atun hamid, she's not always hamid, she's just pregnant now. When she delivers, it's done. So to me, the explanation I like is that that mix of genders is to say, this situation is not sifa mushabbaha, it is not the, 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 the permanent situation. This is a temporary, and so I chose the things that I thought were most interesting, most exciting, and God knows best. Salam yeah, alaikum. Thank you. 